What's up, SAT test takers? This video is all about the 17 most essential math formulas that you gotta know in order to do your best on the math section of the SAT. The first formula that you gotta know is how to calculate slope of a line. So that's why we got this nice y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Those are placeholders for values of two coordinates. So you, all you gotta do is pick those coordinates. Doesn't matter which one is y1 or which one is y2 you just have to choose and stay consistent the x1 and y1 are a pair and x2 and y2 are a pair the next formula on this list is slope intercept form absolutely critical that you know this formula the m in the formula represents the slope of a line and the b represents the y intercept and something super important when you're given a linear function or linear equation on this test and it's not in that form nine times out of ten you got to get it in that form so you can interpret the line properly Next on the list is the midpoint formula. This will allow you to find the midpoint between two different coordinates. And if you don't remember it, you just have to know that a midpoint is exactly in between two points. So you're, all you're doing is you're taking the average of the two X values and the, the average of the two Y values, and that's it. Next on the list is the distance formula. Now remember, the distance formula is really just Pythagorean's theorem. And if you forget the in, ins and outs of this formula, you can plot the two coordinates and create a little triangle and then just calculate the hypotenuse that way. But this is a really important formula and is almost always tested on the SAT. Next on the list is length of an arc. Now we calculate arc length of a circle, which is kind of like, I consider it the crust of a pizza. So it's that outside chunk of a circle and it's just a length calculation. The N value represents the measure of the central angle and of course R represents the radius of the circle. Next we have area of a sector. So if arc length is like the crust, area of a sector is like the whole slice of the pizza. And the theta in this formula represents the angle, the central angle, and of course R represents radius. Next on the list is the quadratic formula. Now this is a really famous formula and it helps you to find the roots of a quadratic function, which means you're finding the spots where it intersects the x-axis. Next on the list is SOHCAHTOA, which of course I'm wearing on my shirt, and that's an incredible acronym to help you remember the ins and outs of the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent. SO stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, CA stands for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA stands for tangent is opposite over adjacent. Next on the list is the simple but very important formula of probability, which is the number of favorable outcomes, or AKA the number of ways to win over the total number of outcomes. Next, we have the equation of a circle. They always seem to throw one or two test questions about circles and the equation in a coordinate plane on the test. So you wanna know that R stands for the radius and H and K are the X and Y coordinates of the center of the circle. Next on the list is the formula for exponential growth. Now, this equation is super important and will come into play if you get a question that says, hey, we've got a bank account, let's say, or we've got a population that's growing at 12% per year every year, where is it gonna be in 10 years? And so what these values are is, R in that case will be the 12%, it's the amount it's growing. Now it could also be decreasing by 12%, still be 0.12, but then it's negative, so you are subtracting it in that case. And of course, T stands for the number of years after the starting point. Next, we have the formula for an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers that either jumps up or goes down by the same amount each time, like two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. Now in this sequence, a sub n is a of the nth term equals a sub one, which is the first term, plus d, which is the common difference, like the example I gave you, two would be the common difference, times n minus one, and n is the term that you're trying to find. Like if you're trying to find the hundredth term, you'd plug in a hundred for n. Next, we've got the formula for a geometric sequence. Unlike an arithmetic sequence, a geometric sequence progresses by a multiplier. So for example, if you have a multiplier of three, it would go three, nine, 27, 81, and so on and so forth. So in this formula, again, a sub one is the first term in the sequence. R is that common multiplier or common ratio. And then of course, N is the term or number of term that you're trying to find. 
Next, we have a quick and easy formula to help you find the vertex of a parabola. And this is especially important if you're ever given a quadratic function and you're trying to find either the max or min value. You can quickly plug this in and negative B, so B stands for, again, the coefficient of the second term in the quadratic. And that A value is from the coefficient of the first term in the quadratic. Next on the list is how we convert from degrees to radians. So all you got to do is take your measurement in degrees, plug it in for theta, multiply it by pi over 180, and you get the equivalent value in radians. Next on the list is vertex form of a parabola. This is a great formula to have in your back pocket because if you see a quadratic function presented in this format, you can quickly see where the vertex is. The vertex is at h comma k. Finally, one of the most famous formulas in math, Pythagorean's theorem. It's not that difficult of a formula to memorize. You should really have it down. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared for any right triangle where c is the measure of the hypotenuse. A and b could be either leg, it doesn't matter. But that common relationship exists for all right triangles. That's it for the 17 most essential important math formulas for the SAT. If you want to see more from Scalar Learning about SAT prep, make sure to check out my walkthrough videos here and here. They're both really, really good, really helpful. will help you get your studying on point. I wish you guys the best of luck when you take the SAT and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.